What's up, Internet? My name's Ori. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video? Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. Today, we're going over Digital Daily number 37 for BBK and 11. Uh, and most of the stuff that happened, we kind of assumed was going to happen. Uh, but there are some things to kind of break down. Uh, at least 90% of the dailies was one conversation between Daniel and Kuzi, but let's kind of go over what we learned, what what was going on, and and kind of give you an idea of what's happening. So first off, Ty did use the veto on himself. Kind of obvious that that was going to happen. Uh, he comes off the block, and Kuzi was named as the replacement nominee. Uh, all things that we kind of just assumed that was going to happen. It didn't really make sense for them to take a shot at Daniel over Koozie and keep Koozie and Ty in the game for the girly pops or Renee. Uh, it just really kind of made sense. If you can't get rid of Ty, get rid of Koozie, the next biggest target in the house. Uh, and she's been pretty much hiding in her bedroom the entire time since this happened. Uh, Anika has uh, had to come up and tell her like, hey, come eat some chili. You can't keep hiding in here all day. And she was like, fine, I'll go down there and do it. Uh, which, again, is like part of that idea where it's like, oh, yeah, koozie has got this great social game. But does she just give up now that she's on the block? And we get a little bit more of that from the convo with Daniel and Anika, because, again, this was kind of like 90, 95 percent of all of the dailies today was this conversation. And she kind of says, like, look, I know I'm going home. Uh, and at this point, I just want them to come beg me for their jury vote, right? Because if they get to the final two, they still need my vote. That's part of the game. Uh, so she's like, that's how it's going to be. And she's like, I'm not being a sourpuss, but she is. <laughs> and she kind of wants to like play up how she's upset about it, but she's not being a sourpuss. It's like, you're kind of contradicting yourself there a little bit, Koozie. But hey, hey listen, everyone's got, uh, <laughs> got their way of dealing with uh, being on the block. Uh, they do also talk about like, so every year there's always a little bit of like superstitions when it comes to Big Brother. Uh, the fans will have superstitions like, oh, the first one in doesn't win. Like whoever enters the house first is, is not going to be the winner. I think that has happened now at this point. I forget who it was, but somebody entered first and ended up winning. Uh, but there's always like little superstitions that people have, especially in the house, like Oh, if you sleep in this bedroom, like that's the death room. Well, apparently it's the middle bed in the toucan room because they were talking about how they were trying to get, you know, CC to come on over and sleep in the toucan room and be in that middle bed. Uh, but they know that's uh, the, the one that everyone seems to go home when uh, they end up sleeping in that one. Uh, they talked about how they worried about how they're viewed outside. Like Koozie's like, I feel like I was playing such a good game and, you know, will people like look down on me now because I'm acting like this now that I'm on the block and maybe, uh, but overall Daniel was like, I, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't care. Like people will, he's like, I was such a fan of this game and I never realized how it would actually feel when I was inside that house, which is just a sentiment that we've heard over and over from former house guests. And it's a thing I truly actually believe. Like, there's something that happens as soon as you walk through those doors of the house that just changes your mindset. It changes how you were thinking uh, when you're in there. You don't realize like how hard it actually is and what you would end up doing in those situations. So it's just it's like uh, walking into a whole nother world as soon as you step through those doors. And it's something that I don't think any of us would really truly understand unless we actually played it. Uh, so they were just kind of talking about how, like, whatever people say, like, we don't care. <laughs> but Daniel does try and, you know, appease her a little bit, saying, like, listen, like, we're all gonna have good and bad things. But he says, I think yours are gonna be mainly mainly good. Like, you did really well. Um, Kuzi tells him, like, hey, don't hold up any deal with Renee. Uh, and he says he might only in the sense that if he has to put, you know, the girls up, he'll put the other two girls up, uh, and then Renee as a replacement uh, for if the veto happens. Uh, and then they talk about how, you know, it's probably best for him to keep Ty around. Uh, he thinks that in the end, if he's sitting there, like, he probably can beat Ty in the end. Uh, but, you know, can Daniel win against it? They kind of start having this discussion. Like, what is, what is, you know, the best move for him? Kuzi kind of says, listen, if you're sitting there next to Anika, 
it's a guaranteed win. If it's against Ty, it's a 50-50 shot. Uh, you're, you're, it's not 100% sure. But it does seem like going into this double eviction, which is going to be a big one, we were kind of thinking, well, if Ty doesn't win, he's out. Now it seems like maybe if Ty doesn't win the veto or doesn't win HOH and Daniel wins veto or HOH, Ty could be sticking around through this double eviction. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out uh, on Thursday's episode. Uh, they also, she kind of flat out asked him, like, what would you do? Like, would you take Ty or would you take Anika? Uh, and they go over kind of like the, the points of like, you know, yeah, Ty's won a lot and they've played different games. So it's probably more of a 50 50 chance. Like, will people respect Daniel's game? Will people respect how Ty got there? Because if he gets there, he probably had to win out and do all this different stuff. They bring up the idea that, well, if you're making that decision on whether or not to take Ty or Anika, that means you beat them in the final three, which he feels good about. He thinks he can beat both of them in, in the dates uh, section of the HOH. So he feels like, you know, in that final HOH, he would end up having the decision if it was a final three with him, Ty, and Anika. Uh, he also says it would have been a little bit easier before Kuzi had told him about things that Anika was saying. Apparently, Anika uh, was full on ready to kind of debunk a lot of Daniel's points because of the whole idea that they were in the shady bunch and like his moves were her moves. They were all kind of doing it together. Um, and Daniel's, you know, a little bit worried about that and also thinks like, hey, like, I don't think that's very, you know, cool <laughs> of her to just be like, oh, well, like this discredit, you know, his game. So it, it would really be interesting to see how that all ends up playing out. If that was a final three scenario, would Daniel take Ty? Would Daniel take Anika? I don't know. I feel like it, I honestly feel like it's a win either way. They were saying it could be like 50-50. But I think all the girls end up voting for for Daniel to win. That's that's uh, would have been what five votes just of the girls that are still in the house right now would all end up voting for Daniel to win. Santina probably votes for Daniel to win. Hope probably votes for Daniel to win. Jonathan, maybe Dan doesn't. Maybe Dan votes for Ty. But other than that, I think it Daniel would have a very easy time up against Ty in the end. You never know, though, right? Like. Once Kuzi leaves, because Kuzi obviously is the front runner for the jury, they could all decide, hey, you know what? Ty did battle his way to the final two, and they might respect that. But for the most part, I I, I think the jury is kind of like, eh, nah, let's just vote for Daniel. <laughs> Same thing with Anika. If it's Daniel or Anika, I think that's a, a pretty easy uh, victory for him. Maybe the girly pops vote for Anika over Daniel. But the crown overall all votes for Daniel and that would probably lock him up a win. Uh, Ty would probably vote for for Daniel over Anika. Uh, Dan would probably vote for Daniel over Anika. Uh, harder to tell with him. Uh, but yeah, I think overall in that final three scenario that they're kind of setting up here with Ty, Daniel and Anika, I think Daniel would be set up pretty well to get the win uh, in that situation. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if we even get to that, how it would happen. Uh, you know, they would still have to get rid of the girly pops. Uh, and that's not exactly an easy thing to do, uh, especially with uh, Claudia uh, and Renee both winning the HOHs the past two weeks uh, and uh, Nene even winning a veto. So uh, they win when it seems to matter, uh, the girly pops. So let's see uh, how that all ends up ha happening. Uh, speaking of the girly pops, that was kind of the other conversation. It was very short, but we did get a little bit of info, uh, from, from it on how they're feeling with Koozie kind of playing up this idea that she's madder than she is. Uh, they talk about how weird things are and it, it seems like maybe something even happened with Koozie where she kind of called out Renee, or maybe it's just that she's, you know, acting, you know, very sad and, and sitting up in, in her bedroom all day and, and kind of acting petty. Uh, but they don't like how, you know, Daniel and Anika are kind of just, you know, playing it into it and kind of comforting her and like supporting her and acting that way. Uh, and then meanwhile, they'll also be like laughing uh, when they're away from them. So it kind of feels like they're, you know, kind of uh, even when they're in power, they're left out of things, which is funny because as they're talking about this, you can hear them laughing in the other room. 
Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the daily. There wasn't too much from it, right? A good portion of it uh, was that convo with uh, Daniel and Kuzi, which was a, it was a good convo. It was fun to listen to, uh, but only so much like really important information from it. A lot of it was, you know, coulda, shoulda, wouldas from the game and, and stuff like that. But overall, uh, it seems like Kuzi will be the one to be evicted on Thursday. I don't see any situation where it's not. Unless, unless it's Wendy's points time. So here's the thing. We've known about the Wendy's points since week one. Santina, you know, told them all like, oh, you'll be able to win Wendy's points. Uh, then eventually they actually even showed uh, this to the house guests about how you uh, get Wendy's points, you know, by winning HOH, veto, uh, surviving eviction, selected for the HOH breakfast. Uh, uh, when you just compete uh complete a week of the game you get 100 points uh and then there was like uh the scavenger hunt on how they they uh were able to find uh more wendy's points in the house here's what the standings are anika dead last with uh only 2050 uh points uh renee just ahead of her uh with 400 more uh, Daniel in fifth place. Then you got Claudia. Ty, who has won so many competitions, but only has uh, 2975 uh, 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 points. And then Nene, who has a bunch of points. I believe it's because Daniel, not, not Daniel, Dan left her his points, I think. Uh, so she got kind of like doubled up there. Kuzi, meanwhile, has almost everybody's points that has been evicted so that's been kind of the thing where like people as they've been leaving they were given points by uh whoever had them hope i know gave her uh his points uh i think jonathan gave her his points uh it's yeah everybody was given her, her points and if you look here she almost has more than everyone combined <laughs> she's got so many of these points so here's the thing even if the points don't come into play this week, which at this point, I just don't know if they will. Being the double eviction week, it's almost like putting a hat on a hat, right? Like, we've already got the double eviction. You don't need to add the Wendy's points into the double eviction, right? It just seems like it's too much going on. Wendy's points, to me, the, the thing I was thinking about is maybe they come into play in the final three or in the final four, uh, kind of like that late game. Uh, and, and that would make a little bit of sense to me. Cause those are always kind of like those, like not much is really going on, especially like final four. It's all about veto. So maybe the points come into play during the veto competition, but if they come into play this week, it would seem like Kuzi would be able to do something to be able to help her save her game. It, it, we don't know, even know exactly what it would be like up here. It just says, and who knows what type of game changing advantage the points can be cashed in for later in the season. So we don't know. Maybe she's able to get some secret veto and take herself off the block this week. If that's the case, maybe Daniel ends up going up and then it's Daniel versus Anika. And then Daniel ends up leaving this week, which would be a, just a wild turn of events uh, that would happen in the house. But if she doesn't get to use her Wendy's points this week, she then has to gift her Wendy's points to someone. And it seems like she would most likely gift her points to Daniel, which then would give him the most power in the house uh, afterwards. If these points end up coming out, like who knows what he would be able to use them for. Again, we just don't know almost anything about these points, but these are the current standings uh, and how they're, they're sitting. What do you guys think? Will they come into play this week? Will we have to wait to find out longer uh, for them to come on out? Uh, who do you think Kuzi would end up giving her points to if she doesn't get to use them this week? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, ways this could go. But let me know in those comments down below what you guys are thinking of everything from the dailies about Kuzi potentially leaving. Will she end up getting saved somehow by these Wendy's points? Uh, what do you think is going to happen in the double eviction? Uh, it seems like maybe Ty has a pretty good chance of staying now if it's not just him competing for the veto, but also uh, with Daniel as well, kind of having his back in, the, in this situation. 
what's going to happen there. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Also, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. Uh, check out the links to all my socials in the description and a pinned comment down below. Things like my Twitter, my Twitch, my Discord. Uh, you can check out the new Kickstream. We've been watching Survivor over there. Uh, so go, uh, go check that out as well. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you for uh, all the support you guys give me on all my different platforms. And I will see you next time.